All right. I want to say good afternoon to the brothers and sisters. There's really God here in Cleveland. Good afternoon, Brother Patrick. All right. It's good to stand before you Amen. on another one of the Lord's Sabbath days. <clears throat> so here we are, another Sabbath day. We come to talk. Talk about some stuff. Today, we are going to be talking about, well, the title of the lesson is, You Are What You Eat. You Are What You Eat. Okay. And a lot of people uh, believe that that is talking about something spiritual. And it is. It's talking about something spiritual. But it is also talking about something physical. We've heard this saying many, many times in our lives. And it's always accordance with what you eat and drink as being unhealthy for you, you know? But does that really stop people from eating those unhealthy things? It doesn't. I've seen person after person justify their eating habits as just, it's just what I like, you know? If we gonna die anyway, so we might as well eat what we wanna eat, you know, right? It doesn't matter. Some say because of your choice of foods that your quality of life is diminished, you have to take medicines to counteract, you know, the stuff that you're putting into your body. But does that stop people from eating whatever they want to eat? It doesn't really. Why do some people find it easy to eat in a certain way and others find it hard? It's just like every other command that the Lord has given. We all struggle with different parts of them. But um, man and woman always finds it hard to obey. So um, I remember my sister-in-law one time when I was telling her about the Lord's dietary law, she said, I refuse to believe that the Lord cares about what I eat. And even if I showed her, she was going to refuse to believe it anyway, you know, because it's just not something somebody, people want to deal with. For me, when I came into uh, uh, following the Lord's laws and commandments, following his dietary law was the easiest thing for me. But then I see that it's not the easiest thing. It's a, it's a point of a, a stumbling block for a lot of people. And so today we're going to look at the Lord's dietary law and see that you are indeed, you are what you eat. All right? So we're going to deal with some terms just like we dealt with in the last lesson that y'all had. We dealt with, with the word faith and we dealt with walking in the spirit. Walking in the spirit is just keeping the Lord's commandments. Faith is just believing. We're going to break down the simple terms so that we're not, you know, spookerized, as brother we call it, by, by, these, by these terms. All right, so I this scripture usually finds its way into my lessons somehow, um, not all of them, but most of them. And so we're gonna start this in 1 John chapter three. 1 John chapter three. And we're gonna get what the definition of sin is according to the word of God. Not what we think sin is or what uh, uh, we, we, we believe it to be, but what it is according to the word of God, all right? First John 3, and we're going to read verse 4. Get there, go ahead, brother. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. So whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Transgression means the breaking. So sin, according to the word of God, sin is breaking the law. This is in the New Testament now, right? So this is not something we read, but we're gonna go back to the Old Testament and read it again so that we can see that in the New Testament and in the Old Testament, they both agree what sin is. All right, so let's go to Leviticus chapter four. And we're going to do this for a couple of the things that we're dealing with. Leviticus chapter 4. Verse 
we're gonna read, we're gonna start at two, and we're gonna skip. Leviticus chapter four, and verse two. Go ahead and read. Speaking to the children of Israel, saying, uh -huh. If a soul shall sin through ignorance, against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done uh -huh. and shall do against any of them. So it says if a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done. This is sin. Sin is doing against the commandments here. Right? Skip down 13. And if the whole congregation of Israel sin through ignorance, uh -huh. and the thing be hid from the eyes of the assembly, uh -huh. and they that have done somewhat against any of the commandments, and they the have Lord, done somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord, uh -huh. concerning things which should not be done uh -huh. and are guilty, uh -huh. concerning things which shall not be done and are guilty, that is sin. Sin is doing against the commandments. We read that right here in Leviticus, and we read that in 1 John. So in the New and Old Testament agree what sin is. Sin is transgressing the Lord's commandments. So we're not going to get into, <clears throat> into the whole commandment thing, but we're just going to focus on the eating part. But So we see sin. Sin is just breaking the commandments. Uh oh, commandments. I think I can spell it. The commandments, all right? So sin is just breaking the commandments, right? Yeah. So we're gonna look at another word too, which is gonna come up, and it's righteousness. Now, when people hear the word righteousness, Righteousness. When people hear the word righteousness, they get this uh, seemingly, you know, uh, this righteousness that means, you know, unfallible, you know, uh, without spot, without blemish and stuff. But righteousness has a real simple de definition, just like sin has a real simple de definition. So let's go over to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. We don't hit one person here. And I want to get these out of the way so that we can get into the meat of this. Deuteronomy chapter 6, and we're going to read verse 1. Let's start, let's start at 24. Let me help see. I was just going to read the one, but let's start at 22. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 6 and 22. Go ahead and read. And the Lord showed signs and wonders, uh -huh. great and sore, upon Egypt, mm -hmm. upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household before our eyes. All right, so this is talking about when the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, right? He saw it. He made signs and wonders and brought them out, right? Go ahead. And he brought us out from thence, uh -huh. that he might bring us in to give us the land which he swore unto our fathers. Uh -huh. So he brought them out to give them the land of Israel. Uh -huh. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes. Yes, sir. To fear the Lord our God mm -hmm. for our good always. Uh -huh. That he might preserve us alive. As it is at that this day. Uh huh. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God. Uh huh. And read. And it shall be our righteousness uh -huh. if we are observed to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as He has commanded us. Uh huh. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do these commandments before the Lord our God, as He has commanded us. So righteousness is just doing the commandments. Doing the commandments. Right? It's the opposite of sin. Right? Righteousness is. 
So let's let's go over to 1 Corinthians because we want to see if the New Testament agrees with us. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And when you put these, make the words relatable in a simple way, it makes what you're reading a little more understandable because it's not some fairy tale or not some, you know, spoon read thing that, what did I say, 15? Yeah. And we're going to read one verse here. We're going to read verse 34. 1 Corinthians 15 and 34. So we just read the definition of righteousness in the Old Testament. It will be our righteousness if we do these commandments that he's given us. Go ahead, read. Awake to righteousness uh -huh. and sin not. Awake to righteousness and sin not. Awake to righteousness, do the commandments, and don't break the commandments and sin not. Right? Yeah. Go ahead. For some have not the knowledge of God. Uh huh. I speak this to your shame. Uh huh. I speak it to my shame, too. But this is what righteousness is. Righteousness is keeping the Lord's commandments. And sin is breaking the Lord's commandments. Real simple. Right? All right. So let's start getting into this thing. Let's go over to 1 Peter. Peter is always the, the guy who they go to when they want to throw away the Lord's dietary law too. 1 Peter chapter 1. First Peter two. I'm sorry, first Peter chapter two. Thank you. Brother Ken. <laughs> first Peter chapter two. And we're gonna start reading at twenty one. First Peter chapter two, <coughs> verse twenty one. Go ahead and read. For even here too were you called. Uh-huh. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. So Jesus left an example that we should follow in his steps, right? Go ahead. Who did no sin. Who did no sin. Uh -huh. Neither was God found in his mouth. Uh-huh. Who did no sin. So Jesus was not breaking the commandments. He was righteousness, right? He was keeping the commandments. Right. So we see here, Jesus kept the commandments, right? Mm -hmm. Right, that's what we want to see. So let's go back to uh, chapter 1. And we're going to start reading at verse 13. Peter. Yes, First Peter. Yep. Okay. First Peter chapter 1. We're going to start reading at 13. Yes, sir. Thirteen. Wherefore, go ahead. Okay. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Uh huh. Be so. Uh huh. And hope to the end for the grace that is brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. As obedient children. As obedient children. So this is you doing something here. Not fashioning yourself according to the former lusts in your ignorance. Uh huh. The lusts of your ignorance. Uh huh. But as he which hath called you is holy, uh -huh. so be ye holy in uh -huh. all manner of conversation. So be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Uh -huh. Because it is written. Because it is written. Be ye holy. Uh -huh. For I am holy. So Peter said, he said, uh, uh, he has called you to be, that the Lord has called you to be holy. Right? Be ye holy in all manners of conversation. But he said, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Where did the Lord tell us to do that? So let's go and look at that. Because we're going to find out what actually being holy is. Okay. All right? Let's go back over to Leviticus. And we are going to go to chapter 11. Now, 
Peter said, because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. And this was the Lord that was talking. So we're going to look at where Peter actually got that quote or where it was written that Peter was reading from. Mm -hmm. Leviticus chapter 11, we're going to start at verse 1. Go ahead, read. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, uh -huh. saying unto them. So this is when Israel had come out of Egypt, and the Lord is starting to give them his commandments. He's telling them what, what they should do, what they should not do, and he gets to the, to the eating part. Here we go. Go ahead, read. Speaking to the children of Israel, saying, uh -huh. These are the beasts which you shall eat among all beasts that are on the earth. Uh -huh. So these are the beasts you shall eat which are, on, are all, among all beasts that are on the earth. All right? Go ahead. Whatsoever part of the hook and its cloven footed, uh -huh. and chew of the cud. Yes, sir. Among the beasts that you shall eat. That shall ye eat. Yes, sir. So whatever part of the hook. So the animal, whatever the animal is, it has to have a split hoof, split in two, and it has to chew the cud. Now, I didn't know what chewing the cud was uh, when I first read, read this, but uh, somebody explained it to me. But it's, uh, it's animals that actually chew their food, and then they swallow it, they regurgitate it, they chew it some more. It's for better digestion. But there's only there's a few animals that do that, and you can when you look at them, it look like they're chewing all the time. Cows, rabbits, uh, camels, you know. When you look at a rabbit, it looks like it's chewing all the time. Look, you look at a cow, it looks like it's eating all the time. But that's but that's what chewing the cud is. Go ahead, read. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. these shall you not eat of them that chew the cud. Uh huh. So. There are some animals that chew the cud that we are not supposed to eat. Go ahead, read. Or of them that divide the hook. So there are some animals that have a divided hook that we're not supposed to eat. So the stipulation is that they have both of them. Right? They have to have a split hook and they have to chew the cud. Alright? Go ahead. As the camel. The camel. Mm -hmm. Because he chewed the cud, uh -huh. but divided not the hook. Mm -hmm. He is unclean unto you. Uh -huh. So the camel, he chewed the cud, but he got a foot. He don't have a hoof, right? He's unclean to you. All right? You should not eat him. Keep on going. And the coney, and because the... he chewed the cud, uh -huh. but he bite him not the hoof. He is unclean unto you. Uh huh. And the coney. <laughs> I probably should have looked that one up, but I didn't. Uh, but whatever the coney is, uh, it chews the cud, but it doesn't have a hoof. I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume it has a foot of some kind or a claw or something like that. All right? And the hare. And the hare. That's the rabbit. Because he chewed the cud, uh -huh. but divided not the hoof, uh -huh. he is unclean. Right. You. The hare chews the cud, but he's got feet. Right? Paws. Paws. So he's unclean to you. All right? And the swine. And the swine, the dreaded pig. Here we go. Though he divided the hook uh -huh. and be cloven footed. Yes, sir. Yet he chewed not the cud. Mm -hmm. He is unclean unto you. Uh huh. So it, it, he goes the other way and shows an animal that has a split hook but doesn't chew the cud. That's the pig, right? We're not supposed to eat that. Read, read that. Uh, eight, two. Read eight. Of their flesh shall you not eat, uh -huh. and their cock uh -huh. shall you not touch. Uh -huh. They are unclean. Uh -huh. You're not even supposed to touch a dead pig. I guess you can pet them when they're alive, but you know you're not supposed to touch the carcass of a dead pig. All right, skip on down to forty-four. Every day. For I am the Lord your God. Uh -huh. You shall therefore sanctify yourself, and uh -huh. you shall be holy. Sanctify yourself. That's another one of these words that has spooky connotations. Sanctify. I think we're going to go over what that is. 
S A N C T I L Y. Okay. You're going to call me out in front of the people, man. <laughs> That's it. Thank you, sir. Sanctify. You shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy. Uh huh. For I am holy. For I am holy. This is a direct quote. This is what Peter was quoting when he said, uh, For the Lord said, I am holy, be ye holy. Right? Right. He's quoting directly from the dietary law. Exactly. Keep on reading. Neither shall you defile yourself uh -huh. with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Uh huh. So you shall you shouldn't defile yourself with any creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Uh huh. Skip down to forty seven. To make well, a the, the, the forty six too. Okay. This is the law of the beast. This, this is the law of the beast. So we understand this is a, a law, a separate law from the commandments. Keep on reading. And of the fowl. Mm -hmm. And of every living creature that moveth in the waters, uh -huh. and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth. Now we didn't look at everything, but he goes through the birds in here too, and he goes through the fish. And in order for you to eat something that's in the water, it has to have fins and scales. So it can't have one or the other. It has to have both of them, just like the beast has to have chew the cud and have the split hoof. So. You're going to throw away your, your shrimps and your lobsters and all that stuff. And this is where people get crazy on me at when I, when I tell them about this stuff, you know. All right, 3, 4, 7. To make a difference between uh, the unclean and uh -huh. the clean. To make a difference between the unclean and the clean. This is why he's having you do this. To make a difference between the unclean and the clean. Uh-huh. And between the beast that may be eaten. Uh-huh. And the beast that may not be eaten. Between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. Now, Peter here is in the New Testament. Why would he be quoting something right out of the dietary law? It's because the Lord knew that people were going to take Peter's words out of context. And they have. They go to Peter all the time in order to try to throw away the dietary law. All right? But... We looked at um, holy. So being holy, which is another one of the words, directly has to do with being clean. Right? And he said, uh, be ye holy for I am holy. And I'm giving you this law to put, me, to, to put a difference between the clean and the unclean. So being holy is being clean. Right? Yeah. All right. Let's go over to Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to hit one thing in there. Hebrews chapter 12. And the reason why I define all these things, just to make them simple, to make them relatable, so that when you hear these words, you, you're not uh, overwhelmed by them and thinking that it means some great thing. We didn't do sanctify. Sanctify just means to separate. So when somebody says that they're sanctified, it just means that they're separated. That's all. You know, sometimes I want to sanctify my kid's head from his neck, but I don't, you know. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No, uh, let's go to Hebrews, we're at 12, we're just gonna read one, one verse in here. 14. Go ahead, read. Follow peace with all men. Follow peace with some men? All men. All men, all right? And holiness. Uh -huh. And holiness. Without which no man shall see the Lord. So, without holiness, you will not see the Lord. So without being clean, you won't see the Lord. Amen. Right? Without holiness, no man can see the Lord. Right? right? Peter just, I mean, it just says it here in Hebrews. So let's go back over to Deuteronomy 14. Now take a look at something. And 
we're not even going to be dealing with all the other commandments that people are supposed to be doing. We're just dealing with with this eating thing here. Because a lot of people have a lot, they have a, a, a problem with it. And it's not a problem with me. Because I'm not saying that. I'm reading the scripture here, and the scripture says, you know, this is what it is for, right. to put a difference between clean and unclean. So if you got a problem with the clean and the unclean, you got a problem with what the Lord is saying. Yeah. What did I say? Deuteronomy 14. Yeah. We're going to start at verse 1. Deuteronomy 14, verse 1. Go ahead, read. You are the children of the Lord your God. Now he's talking about Israel here. Uh -huh. You shall not cut yourself, uh -huh. nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. Uh -huh. For the dead, yes, sir. For thou art an holy people. So thou art an holy people. Uh -huh. Until the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. And the Lord has chosen thee uh -huh. to be a peculiar people unto himself. Uh -huh. Above all the nations that are upon the earth. Above all nations that are upon the earth, why? Thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. Thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. So he said these are holy people. And they're holy because the Lord gave them the dietary law. So that they could sanctify themselves and set themselves apart from other people. By following the dietary law. Making them holy. Thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. So if you eating something that's unclean. That makes you abominable. Yeah, abominable. I gotta sound everything else. It makes you abominable when you're eating unclean things, right? right. All right. I probably should have gotten the definition for abominable, but we all we all kind of know what that means. All right, so let's go back to the New Testament. So what we're doing here is we're going from the Old Testament to the New Testament just to make sure that they agree right. in this thing, all right? Mm -hmm. So 2 Corinthians. And you would think that this would be, well, when the Sunday church threw away or when the Roman church threw away God's laws, this, this went with it too. Mm. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this back and then you're going to realize that you got to put everything back. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start at 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. 6 and 14. Go ahead and read, bro. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Uh huh. So be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Uh huh. But what fellowship had? What fellowship had righteousness with unrighteousness? So what fellowship has righteousness, keeping the commandments, with unrighteousness, breaking the commandments? Right. Keep on. And what? Communion has light with darkness. Uh -huh. Light with darkness. Light meaning uh, righteousness. Darkness meaning unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. And what concord has Christ with Baal? Mm -hmm. What what concord has Christ with with Baal? Or what part has he that believeth with an infidel? Uh -huh. What part does he that believes with one that doesn't believe? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? Uh huh. For ye are the temple of the living God. Uh huh. So it says, What agreement have the temple of God with idols? You are the, temp the living temple of God. Mm -hmm. As God has said, mm -hmm. I will dwell in them and walk in them. Yes, sir. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they will be my people. Uh huh. Wherefore, Come out from among them, uh -huh. and be ye separate, and be ye the Lord. separate, says the Lord. Uh -huh. 
and touch not the unclean thing, uh -huh. and I will receive you. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Wherefore, come out from among them and be separate or sanctify yourself. That's right. Right? Amen. Be separate. And touch not the unclean thing, the unclean thing, which will make you unholy. And I will receive you. So one of the conditions of the Lord receiving you is that you not mingle yourself with unclean things, right? So we have a law of beasts which shall be eaten and shall not be eaten. Putting the difference between the clean and the unclean. And the Lord said, don't touch the unclean thing and I will receive you. So this is speaking directly to what you put in your body, in your physical body. You set yourself apart. All right? Let's go over to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5. This is not a long one today. It's not a long one today, man. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5, we're going to start at verse 1. When people read some of the stuff that we have read as, as far as being holy and stuff like that, they never uh, attribute it or connect it to food okay. or your physical being. They always say it's spiritual. And it's that too. It's that too. There's, there, we eat a lot more spiritual than we do uh, physical. Right. However, in in the verses that we pulled out of here, the verses that Peter said, he's quoting directly from the physical, what we actually put in our bodies, or what we actually touch, and stuff like that. So let's start Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Go ahead. Be ye therefore followers of God uh -huh. as dear children. Yes, sir. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us mm -hmm. and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Yes, sir. But fornication. But fornication. And all uncleanliness. And all uncleanliness. Being it spiritual uncleanliness and physical uncleanliness. Mm -hmm. Or covetousness. Uh huh. Let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. Uh, so don't let this uncleanness, and I'm just focusing on the uncleanness, don't let this uncleanness be something people say about you guys. Uh huh. Keep on. Neither filthiness, uh -huh. nor foolish talking, mm -hmm. nor jesting, uh -huh. which are not convenient, mm -hmm. but rather giving of thanks. Yes, sir. Neither filthiness, which is uncleanness, or foolish talking or jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Uh huh. For this you know uh -huh. that no whoremonger, uh -huh. no unclean person. No, this you should know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, uh huh, no covetous man, no covetous man, who is an idolater, uh huh, have any inheritance, uh huh, in the kingdom of God. Of Christ and of God. And of God. So know this, know ye this, that no, un and I'm focusing on the unclean part, no unclean, no unclean person is going to have a part in the kingdom of God. Right? right. When we talk right. about uncleanliness, we're talking about spiritual, but we all know that, but we're talking about a physical uncleanness. Amen. This is required. Yes. It's not something that we, uh, you know, well, it's just this body and we're going to get a new body, you know, so we don't really have to, you know, this body's going to be done away with, so we don't. No, no, this is a whole thing inside and out. The, our, if, that, if that was the case, then our, um, our mannerisms are according to uh, 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 fornication and adultery and stuff like that wouldn't matter either because that's done in the physical, you know? Okay. So 
When we say physical, we mean it encompasses everything. Right. Even what you eat. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Mm -hmm. well, because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Yes, sir. So let no man deceive you with vain words or words that don't mean anything. Mm -hmm. For because of these things come the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. The wrath of God comes upon the children of disobedience, meaning that he gave us, commanded us, gave us a dietary law that was of what's clean and what's unclean and that was going to make us holy and being holy gives us entrance into the kingdom of the kingdom of god along with a lot of other stuff however but this is just one part of it that we focus on right now all right so let's jump back to exodus chapter 13. exodus 13. We're going to start at verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, uh -huh. whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, uh -huh. both of man and of beast, it is mine. It is mine. So this is when, uh, uh, of course, the children, were, the children of Israel were coming out of uh, Egypt. And the Lord said, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn. That doesn't mean perform some type of ritual on them. It just means separate the firstborn for me. Set them apart for me because I'm going to have a special thing for the firstborn. All right? Set them apart for me. Go ahead. Okay. Skip on down to, uh, skip on down to 12, 312. Thou shalt not set apart. Thou shalt set apart. Thou shalt set apart uh -huh. until the Lord all that openeth the matrix uh -huh. and every first thing that cometh of a beast mm -hmm. which thou hast. The male shall be the Lord. The male shall be the Lord. Separate. Set apart. That's all that means, sanctify. It's not no, it's not a big word that has big ceremonies to it. It just means set apart. If you actually go through the book and you replace the definitions with these words, you kind of understand it a little bit better. I know I do. When I go through and I see the word sin, I put breaking the commandments in, you know, and it helps me. When I go and I see sanctify, I put set apart or separate. When I hear right, when I see righteousness, I automatically think doing the commandments. And things become a lot clearer. When you have these words in here and they're not defined and they're kind of ambiguous, people sort of make up whatever they think they mean. So we're going to ask this. All right, so we're going to go back over to 1 Timothy. Timothy's is before he grew. Chapter 4. So when my sister-in-law told me that she refused to believe that the Lord cares about what you eat, I just found it kind of funny because the Lord went through a lot given this law. He went through and explained everything that you can eat that you can't eat, and he put a lot of work into it, you know, only for it to be thrown out the window, you know, for nothing. So, there are a few scripts, I don't think I included the one, I probably should have, but there's a lot of scripts that people go to and they, because they don't understand some of these words, they misinterpret it, and uh, because they want to do what they want to do, they put their own spin on it, but we're going to read it the way it's supposed to be read. Yes, sir. First Timothy 
chapter 4, we're going to start at verse 1. Go ahead and read. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, uh -huh. giving heed to seducing spirits uh -huh. and doctrines of devils. Uh -huh. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, uh -huh. having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Yes, sir. Forbidding to marry. Yes. And commanding to abstain from meats. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. Uh -huh. Which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. And know the truth. Now, here's where we start getting into the muddy waters. It says, the Spirit speaks in the last time that some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. He's talking about a specific people here. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. A group of people who's going to go away from the faith. Right? Mm -hmm. He said they're going to be speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared. They're going to be forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God has created to be received with thanksgiving. Right. Now, he created them to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. All right? Keep on reading. For every creature of God is good. Uh-huh. And nothing to be refused. Yes, sir. If it be received with thanksgiving. See, and then we get to this one, and then everybody say, see, we can eat what we want to. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused to be received with thanksgiving. See? It's good. But I say read the next verse. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. For it is sanctified uh -huh. by the word of God uh -huh. and prayer. Uh-huh. So for it is sanctified, set apart or separate by the word of God. Where do we see uh, the creatures of God separated or set apart? In Leviticus 11. We read that. That's where they are set apart. Right? Right. They are set apart by the word of God. We read the word of God, we see that they're set apart, right? right. Mm -hmm. So they are sanctified or they are set apart by the word of God and prayer, mm -hmm. not or prayer. Right. Right. You can't take a pork chop or and have a plate of shrimp right. and pray over it and right. become clean. Right. Right. It's sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So you have your mm -hmm. lamb chop, you know, or your steak, mm -hmm. and you pray over it. You know? Otherwise, your prayer is meaningless because you can't pray over something that's unclean like the food that he already set apart right. and make it clean. Right. That's unclean. Right. That's just like you're trying to pray over the devil and make him clean. Right. He's already unclean. He's been set apart. He's been, as, apart. He's been, he's been sanctified right. in his job. Right. Yeah. In his job. Right. And no amount of your prayer is going to you make them clean. You know, it's just not going to happen. The same thing with the food. You can't pray over your your lobster tails and think that the Lord's going to be like, oh, he's praying over lobster tails, you know. Bless you. Make a sign, bro. Let me not do that. All right, so let's, uh, let's go back to the middle Leviticus chapter 20. <coughs> it's amazing too. And you know, it's funny. The, the, the dietary law is one of the, the first things that I always hit people with who are who don't know the truth and stuff like that. And I always mess with them. You know, I got a guy at work who I mess with all the time. And um uh, you know, he'll have some. I'd be like, you know, you're not supposed to be eating that, man. You know, and so uh, he actually though started um, changing the way he eat, especially when he seen me coming around. Right. So we'd be out at we'd be out at the food truck or something, 
and you know, and I, you know, I get something off the, off the food truck, and then he'll get something off the food truck, and I'll be like, "Hey, man, don't they have some some bacon in it?" He'd be like, "Oh, I told him. Yeah. I told him not to put the bacon in there." <laughs> so you get them, get, get, get little battles where you can, man. You know, yeah, yeah. maybe I get them to come out. You know, and, One and look at yes, right. Yes, but some people are so resistant when you tell them. You know that they can't eat a certain thing because of God said it. They they truly get offended. You know. So where are we at? What did we, say? we said Leviticus twenty. We gonna start at verse six. Leviticus twenty and six. Go ahead and read. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits uh -huh. and after wizards. And after wizards, familiar spirits. We talked about that too before. What familiar spirits were, uh huh, and to, after wizards, mm -hmm. to go a whoring after them. Yes, sir. I will even set my face against that soul, uh huh, and will cut him off from among the people. Uh huh. So, whoever goes after familiar spirits and after wizards or witches, to go after them, to ask them, you know, somebody to read you some tarot cards or anything like that, you know, he says that he will set his face against that soul and cut him off from among the people. Uh huh. Sanctify yourselves, uh -huh. therefore, uh -huh. and be ye holy, uh -huh. for I am the Lord your God. For be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. uh, skip on down to 22. Ye shall therefore keep all my statutes. Uh -huh. All the statutes, not some of them. And all my judgments. And all my judgments, not some of them. And do them. And do them. It's just what Jesus said, right? We said we saw that Jesus uh, was did not sin, right? Right, right? So he was keeping the commandments. He did them all. Yes. Mm -hmm. That the land where I bring you to mm -hmm. dwell therein, spew you not out. Uh huh. So he said, you know, keep my statutes and all my judgments, judgments, so the land where I where I put you at won't kick you out. Mm -hmm. And you shall not walk in the manners of the nation. Uh huh. Which I cast out before you. Uh huh. So you shall not walk in the manner of the nations which I cast out before you, right? Sanctify yourself, separate yourself. Uh huh. Well, they committed all these things, uh -huh. and therefore I abhor them. I abhor them, right? Abhor, hated. Abhor them. Go ahead, Rick. But I have said unto you, uh -huh. you shall inherit, inherit their land, uh -huh. and I will give it unto you to possess it. Yes, sir. A land that flows with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord your God, which has separated you from other people. Uh -huh. Which has sanctified you from other people. Right? Because he gave us, or he gave Israel, something different than he gave the other, well, he didn't give the other people anything, but he gave Israel something that was going to separate themselves from, that was going to make them different from everyone else, right? The way they wore their beards, the way they ate, the way they worshiped. They only worshiped one God, while the, the nations around them worshiped multiple gods. Keep on reading. You shall therefore put difference uh -huh. between clean beasts and unclean. Here we go again. You shall therefore put difference between Beasts and unclean beasts. He says, separate yourself, sanctify yourself. You shall put a difference between clean and unclean beasts. So separating yourself or being sanctified means you are not consuming unclean beasts. All right? And between unclean fowls and uh, clean. Uh-huh. And ye shall not make your soul abominable by beasts. Uh -huh. So you shall not make your soul abominable by beast. Or by fowl. Uh-huh. Or by any manner of living thing that creepeth upon the ground. Yes, sir. Which I have separated you from as unclean. Uh-huh. Which I have separated you from as unclean, which I have sanctified. I sanctify the 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 beast that chews the cud and has a split hook. I sanctify the fish that has fins and gill right. for you to separate you from other people right. so that you can be holy, right? Mm -hmm. This is all part of being holy or being righteous. Right. Keep reading. 
and you shall be holy unto me. Uh -huh. For I, the Lord, am holy. Yes, sir. And have severed you from other people that you should be mine. Uh -huh. And whenever he talks about being clean or sanctifying himself, he always mentions food. And whenever he mentions holy, he's always mentioning food. You shall not make yourself uh, abominable by consuming these foods. Okay. So whenever the Lord mentions holy, it's always followed somewhere you can read where it's going to mention something about the food, you know. And by the time we got to the New Testament or when we got to the apostles, everybody knew that. That's why they didn't repeat these things, you know, when they were talking about being holy and stuff like that. They already assumed that they, well, when they were talking to Israel, they already assumed that they knew that. And then the people around them knew Israel and they knew Israel's customs. And so when they talked to them, they were talking to people with some semblance of knowledge of what was going on around here. Right now, when I talk about that type of stuff, you know, we we were so far removed from this stuff that, you know, we got to go through the basics first. Mm -hmm. So when they read Paul and Peter stuff in New Testament, they get all confused and they think that it means this and they think that means that. But if you go back to the Old Testament yes. and read this, you will understand what's going on. So let's Amen. go over to, did we finish that? Yep. Let's go over to Isaiah 65. Because this really is not anything to play with. People take this whole dietary thing for a joke and they think it's, you know, somebody's being over-righteous, you know, or, but it's not that. If I'm being over-righteous about what I'm what I put in my body that I'm being over-righteous about uh, committing adultery or fornication, you know. They, but they put those two things on two, two different levels when they're actually the same thing. Committing adultery is the same thing as eating a pork chop. I said it. Committing murder it's the same thing as eating lobster tails. That sounds, that sounds funny. That sounds funny. But it's the truth. According to the word of God, it's the truth. Teach. All right? 65, Isaiah 65, we're going to start at verse 2. So, Israel, of course, uh, uh, was given these laws and commandments and of course they don't follow them they don't keep them like they should and uh, so he, he gets he gets angry with them puts them into captivity they come in and out of that captivity but let's start here 65 and 2 I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people uh -huh. which walked in a way that was not good after their own thoughts so he is spread out his hands all day to a rebellious people which walked not in a way that was good after their own thoughts. Uh -huh. A people that provoked me to anger continually to my face. Uh -huh. That sacrificed in gardens and burned incense upon the altars of brick. Uh -huh. that a people that provoked me to anger continually to my face. That sacrificed in gardens and burned incense upon altars of brick. You know, if it's, if it's not working, it's just forget it. We still got it. Which remain among the graves. Which remain among the graves. So these people are alive, but yet he's saying that they remain among the graves. Mm -hmm. So they're dead in some sense. Uh huh. And the lodge and the monuments. And lodge and the monuments. Those are the, the graveyard mm -hmm. things, you know, the mausoleums and stuff like that. Right. Uh huh. Which eat swine's flesh. Which eat swine's flesh. And broth of abominable things and, is in their vessels. Uh -huh, and broth of abominable things is in their vessels. Right? We Ab say. Ab abominable things. Mm -hmm. We say, stand by thyself. Uh -huh. Come not near to me. Uh -huh. For I am holier than thou. Uh -huh. 
These are a smoke in my nose. Uh -huh. A fire that burneth all the day. A fire that burneth all the day. They say to themselves, Stand by thyself, come not near me, for I am holier than thou. These people are smoking his nose all day. Mm -hmm. Right? That burneth all day. So they, they lodge among the graves and lodge among the monuments. They remain among the graves and lodge among the monuments. They eat swine's flesh. They eat abominable things. Right? Lobsters and catfishes. And they say, stand away from me. I'm holier than thou. Mm -hmm. But we've already read, you cannot <laughs> be holy right. if you're consuming these things. Right. If you're right. eating mm -hmm. swine's flesh, you cannot be holy. Yeah, exactly. You're not holy. Yes, That's right. You can't be. And unholy people or people that are not holy, holiness is required in order for you to see the Lord. So you will not see the Lord. That's right. And these people brag, you know, they say, stand away from me because I'm holier than thou. But you can't be. We read that. Let's go to the next chapter. Okay. Go ahead. Verse 6. Verse 6. Behold, it is written before me. Uh -huh. I will not keep silent, uh -huh. but will recompense, even recompense into their bosom. Uh -huh. Behold, it is written before me. He will not keep silence. He will recompense it, even recompense into their bosom. So, I'm not saying this to be over righteous. I'm just saying this. The Lord says, you don't eat these things. And if you eat these things, you're going to be counted as one of the people who is like a smoke in his nose all day. You don't want to irritate the Lord like that. Let's go to the next, uh, next chapter, 66. And we're going to read verse 15. Isaiah 66 and 15. Go ahead, read. For behold, the Lord will come with fire, uh -huh. and with his chariots like a whirlwind, yes, sir. to render his anger with fury, uh -huh. and his rebuke with flames of fire. Uh -huh. So the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots. He's coming with chariots. I'll write it down here. Now we say, well, chariots is, you know, just the things that, you know, horses, horses ride on, you mean, know, horses uh, pull, you know, uh, back in the days, you know, they had um, these wagons that they pulled, you know, they were called chariots, you know, and sometimes they would be used for war. Most of the time they were used for war. Um, I was just reading too, I was reading um, in the book the last two million years, and uh, about how the um, iron, the iron age came about and stuff like that and how in Rome's advent they had these chariots and they was putting iron on them and stuff like that and, and it was uh, uh, one of, it was like their tanks. Mm -hmm. it, it described them in the book as, as being their tanks at that day and you know people couldn't stand up against them because you know they was rolling, they was rolling through, uh, they worked when the land was though was flat, so you know, mm -hmm. when they would get up into the hills or in trees or something, the, the chariots were useless. But they would, you know, just like a tank, you know, right. you can't go right. go into the hilly areas and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it was that was interesting when I was reading about. That. But these chariots, they were used for war, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go over to Psalms sixty-eight. As it says, the Lord is coming with his chariot. And fire. Psalm 68. We're going to read one verse. We're going to read verse 17. Psalm 68 and verse 17. Go ahead and read. And 17. The chariots of God are 20,000. The chariots of God are 20,000. 
Even thousands of angels. Even thousands of angels. So the chariots that the Lord is coming with is angels. Right? He's coming with fire and he's coming with his chariots, which are angels. Right? Keep on reading. The Lord is among them, mm -hmm. as in Sinai, in the holy place. Then the Lord is among them, as in Sinai, as in the holy place. So I just read that just because when we were in Isaiah, it said the Lord is coming with his chariots, but he's not actually bringing literal chariots, he's bringing his angels. And we're going to see that. Let's go over to 2 Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians chapter one. And we're gonna start at verse seven. Second Thessalonians one and seven. Second Thessalonians chapter one and starting at verse seven. Go ahead, read. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. Uh huh. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from the heaven with his mighty angels. So this is talking about the same time that we were talking about in Isaiah. Jesus is God that's going to be revealed from heaven with his chariots. So this is Jesus that's going to be revealed with his angels. All right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. Uh-huh. And that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. In flame and fire, take advantage on them that know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is what was described in Isaiah. It said, and God will come with his chariots and fire, right, to take revenge on the earth. So we see that the God that was talking about is Jesus. And the chariots that he was bringing with him is his angels. All right? Keep reading. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction uh -huh. from the presence of the Lord uh -huh. and from the glory of his power? Yes, sir. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction? When oh. he shall come to be glorified in his saints uh -huh. and to be admired in all them that believe. Yes, sir. Because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Uh -huh. So here we have Jesus is the Lord that's going to come with fire and angels or chariots taking vengeance on them that obey not the gospel. So Jesus is this guy in Isaiah. Right. People want to uh, believe that he, you know, he, that was the father, but that was Jesus. Jesus is our father. He's the only God that we have ever dealt with. That's right. Amen. The first and the last God that we will deal with. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So let's go over to Romans chapter 10. We're going to read one verse in here. We're going to read verse 16. Romans 10 and 16. But they have not obeyed the gospel. But well, they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, uh -huh. Lord, who has believed our report? So Isaiah has said, who has believed our report? So they have not all obeyed the gospel. So he, Isaiah was talking about the same thing. But let's go back to Isaiah. And let's see the report that they didn't believe. Isaiah 66. So we're going back to where we had started. Just so that we're going to start back at 15. Isaiah 66 and 15. So that we can know who this is that's going to be doing this. Isaiah 66 and 15. Go ahead and read 15. For by fire and by his sword. Uh-huh. 15. 
15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. Uh -huh. so and behold, for behold, the Lord will come with fire. This Lord we're talking about is Jesus. We, we just read that, right? Yes, He's coming with fire. We read that. He's coming with fire. Can you read it? And with his chariots like a whirlwind. And we read that his chariots is his angels. And we read that so Jesus is coming with his angels with fire and his angels, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. To render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flame through fire. Yes, sir. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. Uh -huh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. So again, this is not the Jesus that people talk about. Right. That's going to come with a sword. And it's going to kill a lot of people. Mm -hmm. They don't talk about him like this. But this is the guy that's coming back. Right. Yeah. This is the guy that we're going to see when he gets here. Mm -hmm. We're not going to see this guy that's coming and he's going to give his back to the smiters. Right. He's done that. He did that yeah. and he's done with that. When he comes back, he's coming back. And the, all hell's going to break loose. <laughs> They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens, behind one tree, in the midst. Uh -huh. So they that set themselves apart, right, and purify themselves in the gardens, behind one tree in the midst. Now, that tree in the midst is Satan, the devil. And we don't have time to, to, to teach you that, but, you know, if you come back again, we will go through that again. But... They, they, they sanctify themselves. They set themselves apart. Mm -hmm. Not how the Lord set Israel apart by giving them the dietary law and the laws. Right? They sanctify themselves. They set themselves apart and they purify themselves behind in the garden behind the tree. Uh -huh. Eating swine's flesh. Eating pigs. Uh -huh. And the abomination. And the abomination. And the mouth. And the mouse. Shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. Shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. These people, these are the people who he's coming to kill. Mm -hmm. Who Jesus Christ yes. is coming to kill. He's coming to kill the people who uh, uh, who sanctify themselves, who have made up their own rules about how they're going to follow God, who have made uh, themselves their own righteousness. And not have submitted themselves to the righteousness of God, which is part of that righteousness is the dietary law. Yeah, yes, sir. But they've gone about to make their own righteousness. That if I just pray over this crab, it'd be all right. Mm -hmm. Skip on down to 22. For as the new heavens uh -huh. and the new earth, uh -huh. which I will make, shall remain before me, said the Lord. Yes. So shall your seed and your name remain. Yes, sir. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another. Yes. And from one Sabbath to another. Mm -hmm. Shall all flesh come to worship before me, said the Lord. Yes, sir. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. Mm -hmm. For their worms shall not die. Neither shall their fire be quenched. Yes, sir. And they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. They shall be. I guess we ran out of power here. We ran out of power somewhere. We can hear you, though. Yeah, we can hear you. So, and they shall be an abhorring mm -hmm. to all flesh. Okay. So these are the people who the Lord have come to take vengeance upon. Okay. People who have sanctified themselves. And who have uh, who who purify themselves and who uh, eat swine's flesh and the abomination? They should all be consumed, and they they're gonna come. And from one new moon and from another, people are gonna come up to Jerusalem to worship the Lord. From one feast to another, mm -hmm. and they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against them. For their worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched. So when you come up to Jerusalem, you're going to be able to see these people. You're going to see the lake of fire. It's going to be there. That's right. Okay. It's not going to be 100 miles underground <laughs> and the devil got his fork and yeah. people are coming in and he's poking them and they, they're going to, to work. I don't know what they do down there. In the fire, they're going to be working with the coal or something, heating the earth or something. I don't know. However... However, it's not that. They're going to be right there in Jerusalem 
right there when you go up to see Jesus, these people are going to be in this fire burning. And you're going to see it. And that's going to be a deterrent for people. I know if I'm there and I go and I see these people burning up in a fire and they just torment it, I know I would uh, try to change my ways. So where we at? We got a couple more places. Uh, let's go to uh, St. John chapter 10. St. John chapter 10. chapter 10 and we're going to start reading that verse 34 chapter 10 and 34 go ahead and read Jesus answered them is it not written in your law I said ye are gods uh, Jesus answered them saying is it not written in your law I said ye are gods one of the things that I've noticed about the gospels is where Jesus is talking all of the time he's always saying it's written. It's written here. It's written there. Right. Ain't it written here that it says such and such? Right. right. All the things that he said, he got from the Word of God or the, the Old Testament. Right. So that's just something that I noticed. Amen. Keep on reading. If he called them gods, unto whom the Word of God came, uh -huh. and the Scripture cannot be broken. Right. Right. It's the other thing that needs the batteries. Yeah, the other thing, yeah. So don't worry about it. If ye are called gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. Mm -hmm. Scripture cannot be broken. Right, sir. Is the point. This cannot be broken. Right. Righteousness was righteousness. Where righteousness was doing the commandments in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Righteousness is doing the commandments now. Okay. Sin was breaking the commandments in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Sin is breaking the commandments now. Yes. Right. Scripture cannot be broken. So we are gods, actually. Mm -hmm. But we will die like men. At least that's what it says in Psalm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go over to 2 Peter. We're going to have two more places after this. 2 Peter, chapter 1. <clears throat> Chicago and you know everything's going to be invisible to the eye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright. <laughs> yes sir. <laughs> Second Peter uh, chapter 1 we're going to read one verse. We're going to read 19. <clears throat> Go ahead and read. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. So Peter says, we have a more sure word of prophecy. That means that if Peter, Peter saying, if I said something right now, if I said something, you know, and you're not sure what it is, or you, you, you're, un you're, you're unsure about what I'm saying, we got a more sure word of prophecy. Right? It's written. He was talking about the, the law and the prophets. Right. Right? Keep on reading. Where unto you do dwell that ye take heed? Uh-huh. As unto a light that shines in the dark. So this, the more sure word of prophecy is like a light that shines in the darkness. Dark, please. Until the 
day dawn uh -huh. and the day star arise in your heart. Until you get understanding. This more sure word of prophecy is going to be here. Right. Until you get the understanding that you need. Let's go over to 1 John chapter 2. That's the next, next book. Mm -hmm. 1 John chapter 2. We're going to hit one verse there. So Peter said we have a more sure word of prophecy. That is what we've been reading out of. The Old Testament. So if you see somebody and they say they know God, I know Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then you see them with a pork chop on their plate. <laughs> then I'd be like, oh, you don't know Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know him because, you know, if you read what I read, right. what are you going to do to people who eat pork chops? Yeah. You wouldn't be doing that, right. you know? Right. 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 You know, and I don't like calling people liars. You know, because that's such a hard word, but it's just what the book said, you know? Yeah. If these people say that they know the Lord and they keep not his commandments, they lie. Right. They don't know. So let's go to the last place. This is <laughs> Revelation 21. Revelation 21. And this is the last verse here. So, we went over and we cleared up, or we just simplified these words that we see in Scripture all the time to make them more relatable. Sanctify, set apart, righteousness means doing the commandments. Sin means breaking the commandments. Holy means clean. The chariots that the Lord has come with is his angels. These are things that we can use to make reading this book a little more understandable. But also that we have read that you are what you eat. Meaning that if you eat abominable things, you are abominable in the eyes of God. Now that seems kind of harsh too. However, you are what you eat. Go ahead and read this in first. Verse 8. Verse 8, yes sir. But the fearful uh -huh. and unbelieving uh -huh. and the abominable and the abominable uh -huh. and murderers and, murderers. and whoremongers mm -hmm. and sorcerers uh -huh. and idolaters yes sir. And all liars uh -huh. shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. death. Yes. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable, these are the people who defile their bodies with the unclean things which the Lord has told us uh, that we should separate ourselves from. That he separated with the word of God. Yes. Unto us to eat. That's from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Says the same thing. Right. Yeah. And if you're eating these things in which he said not to eat, he abhors you. Right. If you're eating these things, these pork, pork and your catfishes and your your lobster tails, you are abominable. Mm -hmm. And the Lord 
those that the abominable are going to have their place in the lake of fire that burns with brimstone forever. Yes. Now, if you didn't stop eating pork because it's unhealthy for you, or you didn't stop eating these things, the uh, uh, shrimps, because they're the roaches of the ocean, yes. I think that the lake of fire is reason enough for me to stop eating these things. Amen. And if you don't, then may the Lord have mercy on you. All right? Thank you for your time. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, I'll be happy enough.